What's up, friends? If you're looking at new boats, especially Boston Whaler, and you're reading the forums online, you've seen the debate about foaming a boat. What's the best way to do it? And is it really unsinkable? Well, I am with the guy right here, Clay Holcomb. He is the operations manager here at Chesapeake Boat Basin in Kilmarnock, Virginia. Yes, and you have been in this game for how many years? So I was the previous owner of this place okay. and I owned it for 24 years and I've been in boating since I was in a cradle. So, so this I've is your thing. It for, yeah, this is what I do. And one thing I love about Clay is you're gonna see really quickly, he knows his stuff and he's gonna call it like it is, he's not gonna blow smoke, right? And so what you're about to hear is not just some biased, hey, I've been around, I'm, I'm, I'm a Boston Whaler dealer. Let's talk about the foaming process and the choices that they have in the market when they're looking at different boats and why you feel what you feel. Okay. There's a lot of boats on the market today that are all that use foam, okay? But it, it's, it's how it's applied and it's the type of foams that make the difference, okay? And it's, I'll get into that a little bit here right now. So let's go to conventional built foam first. Conventional built boat, we're gonna build a hull, we're gonna put some stringers in it. And a lot of manufacturers will then take the voided areas yep. and they will mix up what's called a foam. They'll mix it up in a five gallon bucket. You can go on videos, you can see it out there and they just dump it in those cavities. So basically what it does is they just filled that cavity with foam. So that's gonna displace water if water ever comes into the boat, which may make that boat technically unsinkable, okay? There's a lot of boats today that are unsinkable. I'm not gonna say, well, there's the only boat out there that's unsinkable because that's not true. Okay. But I'm gonna get into what the difference is in here just a little great. bit. It's great, this is helpful. So you pour foam down in a boat, water cannot get there now. I should say not enough water can get there to sink the boat. Water still may make its way in there. And then what they do, they put a top deck on and then they're either chemically or mechanically bonding the top deck and the lower deck together. So you actually have two pieces that have been put together. Yep. And that boat's always gonna remain two pieces that over time, joints can get weak, screws can come loose. Yes. You know. You see it. You see it. Yep. I mean, it, we've seen it for years. So let's talk about what Whaler does. Whaler uses a compression method. So you have one entire room. If you ever get to go to the factory, you ought to go. They'll let you come tour. It's beautiful. There's this huge room with this massive injection system. And the, the lower hull and the inner hull are put together. They are fiberglass welded is kind of what they call it. And it's basically a fiberglass rope, for a better term, goes all the way around and the two pieces come together. Then through scientific magic, somebody who's a whole lot smarter than me, yep. has learned exactly how much of a foam shot has to go into that boat. So this big crane comes down and they inject mold into a certain spot on the boat. That foam then goes everywhere on the boat. Then it gets compressed because foam, if you ever use great stuff or anything yeah. like that, just a generic foam, you spray it, it comes out real small. You come back later, it's as big. Yep. That's what this foam does too. But the difference is it can't go anywhere, it's trapped. It's trapped in that mold. Got it. So it compresses the foam. So the density of the foam gets extremely tight and it makes it seal every little opening it can find, seals it right up. Which means I'm guessing the benefit to that, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like there should be like less creaking or just like yeah. just general but, things that you hear on. So them. when you're done, the foam that they're using actually is an epoxy based foam. So it basically glues everything it touches together. So when a whaler comes out of that stage of uh, manufacture, it's considered a unibody hull. It's not two pieces anymore. It can never be made two pieces again, maybe with a chainsaw. Got you it. You can't take the boat apart. It's become one. It's one solid That's unique. Hull. That's, that's unique. That's where the big difference is right there. So not only have we filled every cavity completely full, we've made a unibody boat, which makes it extremely strong. And if you take a whaler out and you run it, you'll notice if you hit a lot of hard waves, you don't hear that vibrating or that reverb that you yeah. hear in some boats. You don't see the tops going bang, 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 just because it's such a solid piece. It's like a unibody of a car. Yeah. You know, cars are unibody construction now. That's what whalers are. So if somebody says, and again, I'm just gonna like say what I've heard before. I don't know if it's true or not, help me. Somebody says, well, the problem with that is that the foam gets saturated, it can get really heavy with water and it can get the boat essentially can get waterlogged and there's nowhere for it to go. True or false? Uh, in some circumstances that could happen. Uh, it would probably be 
somebody ran over something, poked a hole in it, and then didn't give it any attention. Right. Because the foam is a closed cell foam, and that's going to be resistant to water wanting to get into it to begin with. We had a customer with a 42. He hit a reef and off the Bahamas. He didn't know about it. He had a hole in the bottom of his boat and used it for the rest of the weekend. He didn't know he had a hole in the boat until he <laughs> hauled it out. Wow. Um, okay, yeah. So, you know, you know, we had to do a little bit of work in the back area to that one little spot. But a conventional boat with no foam in it, it would have popped a hole through the boat. Water would have come in and it just sank. Ah. This customer didn't even know. Big difference. A Huge difference. That is fascinating. Now, another thing about compressing the foam like that and able to fill all categories, I mean, all spaces in the boat, this boat isn't just unsinkable. It has what's called positive flotation. And here's what positive flotation means. If we were to put 50 people on this boat in a garden hose and just start filling it up, it's just going to go down and it's going to stop. It's going to get to a point where it just won't go any further and it's going to stay in that position. Really? A lot of boats, and I hate to say it, if you've ever gone home in the night and the news flash, they're looking for fishermen and the boats upside down and all you see is the tip of the boat sticking yes. out. Well, technically by Coast Guard standards, that boat did not sink. It's not sitting on the bottom, but the people are gone. Correct. If a whaler takes on water, you stay with the boat. It'll go down and it'll reach a point where it won't go anymore. What's that called again? Uh, well, positive flotation. Positive this flotation. Is is. I'm learning today, y'all. So, you know, yes, another brand that might not sink either, but is it gonna roll upside down on you when it takes on water? Right. Whalers won't roll over. Now, can it be rolled over? Yeah, of course you can. You can take a 10 foot wave off the side. And I guess that could knock it over. Sure. We can't We can't foresee everything is gonna happen. Right. But Whaler has done a good job of building the safest boat they can possibly build. And the byproduct of that is quietness, very strong. As you know, that's just a byproduct of it as you get the boats. Well, Clay, this was very helpful and hopefully it's helpful to you and it might answer some of those foam questions uh, that exist in the industry. But you know, I learned some things myself. This is great. We appreciate Chesapeake Bow Basin for allowing us to shoot uh, these videos with them. Um, they're one of our media partners here in the Northern Neck, so they're awesome. They got a great brand and so we appreciate it. we appreciate you make sure you subscribe make sure you share this with your friends your family your grandmother and until the next time everyone stay salty